Okay, today I'm with Baroness Cox, a lifelong advocate um, and fighter of Sharia law. How are you getting on with you um, in Parliament? You're trying to have some laws passed, changed, yes? How's that going? Well, we're deeply concerned about the way many Muslim women are suffering in this country from these aspects of Sharia law, which are inherently gender discriminatory and a threat to the fundamental principle of one law for all. For example, at the asymmetrical divorce, one of the ladies spoke here today had suffered horrendously from that. The polygamy, the so-called honour-based violence, and the other issue that brought us together here today are those victims who have suffered so horrendously at the hands of the Muslim gang raping uh, situations. They gave their story, had a lot of courage to tell their stories. We know that uh, gang rapings can take place as a not Muslim, but in these particular cases they are manifestly ideologically based and encouraged, and uh, it is something which should not be allowed to happen in this country. And the other point which I wish to make very strongly is that many who sought help from the authorities, such as the police or social workers, have not had the help they needed because they were so afraid the police and others in political correctness are being seen to be Islamophobic. and. Uh, these people have been left very vulnerable and not receiving the help that they need. So it's very important to come together today to speak out. I have nothing but admiration for the women who have suffered so much, who've had the courage to speak out. And I hope their voices will not have been spoken in vain today. Okay. I'm sure you know, is it, I think it's Rochdale, there's the first female Sharia um, judge, yeah? And she's, app she's approving 15-year-old marriages. How do you feel about that? Well, it's part of the, it's one of the symptoms of the awful situation which we're trying to challenge today. Um, the there's aspects of Sharia law which are let's say, inherently discriminatory. One Muslim lady said to me, "I feel betrayed by Britain. I came here to get away from all this. It's worse here than in the country I came from." That's where we're at in Britain today, and we have to speak up, speak out, and that's what we're doing today. Yes. And you travel the world um, with your activism, don't you? I do indeed. I've got two sides of my life. One is humanitarian, working victims of oppression and persecution, countries like Nigeria, Sudan. Um, the other is this uh, whole issue of women suffering from the uh, totally unjust and often very cruel aspect of Sharia law. And I've been speaking about that in Australia just last week. Okay. And um, as a kind of an insider, you know, to Parliament, where do you think this will end? I, I, I see Britain being divided into Sharia on one half, um, rule of law on the other. If you have enough people voting for Sharia, we're going to all have to live under it. Is that wrong well, or right? We try and, I'm trying to bring in the private members bill, which would at least address some of the problems causing such suffering to the women. It would require every Islamic, well, mine would require every religious marriage uh, to be legally registered. At the moment, the majority are not. If they were legally registered, then the asymmetrical divorce, a man saying I divorced three times, would no longer apply. The polygamy, which is widespread, would not be legally allowed because we don't allow bigamy. And it would also help bring in protection against the so called honour based violence. So that is one step maybe in the right direction, has certainly support, a lot of support from the Muslim women's groups here, but of course there's still a lot going on out there that we need to speak up about, and that's what today's all about. And I, I have read your book, do you have any more books coming out? I'm not at the moment, but I have quite a few out, I think, uh, and I'm happy to give you a list, including one on this, well, related to this very subject. Okay. Islam, amazing. Islamism is political Islam compatible with liberal democracy, which I wrote my late colleague John Marks. And it's a recommended read. Thank you so much, Baroness. Yes, thank you.